Welcome back guys, another episode is sort of... Oh, I need to do a video on load shedding. Welcome back guys to another episode of Soda Advice, where we like to keep energy solutions simplified. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about something that hits home hard. Now this is load shedding. For those who live in South Africa, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In South Africa, we have a, a trusty company called ESCOM. <laughs> and ESCOM, well, let's put it this way, they're not so great at their job. They're supposed to keep the power on and the lights going, but unfortunately of recent, they have been doing a disastrous job of this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all the different load shedding solutions that are available to you. And I want to give you the pros and I want to give you the cons. So let's jump right in. So the first real option for load shedding was a dirty, stinky, smelly generator. Now, you know, I'm a massive fan of these. Nowadays, you have quite an array of options. Now we're going to go through the first one, which is going to be your cheapest one. And then we're gonna go through to the most expensive and I'm gonna give you a few strategies as to what I think you should do for the long term. Let's start with the UPS backup system. It's something that's been around for a while and in the computer industry, it's very popular. Now you can get these guys in a lithium ion option, which I highly recommend. The lead acid options are currently being phased out. It's something that will run things like your modem, charge your phone or run your laptop whilst load shedding. They'll last a couple of hours depending on how much you're going to put on them and you won't need to get an electrician to wire it to your house. So that's the other thing is plug and play. The other thing to note though is that it's not expandable. You can't add another one like you can with other systems, add another battery. So that's a limiting factor that you need to consider. So to sum up the UPS, they are cheap inexpensive, you don't need an electrician to install it. You can just obviously install it yourself. The cons are that it's not extendable. You can't expand the battery capacity or the, the limit of it. And also it can only run a few things. So next up is the load shedding unit. Now to give you an idea of what these guys are, essentially a makeshift box. Um, in, in the later years now, they are starting to develop these integrated units. But in essence, they're an inverter and a battery inside of a box. These guys range from a kilowatt up to five kilowatts in terms of rating for the inverter. And the battery size at the same time is from a one kilowatt up to something like a four to a five kilowatt hour battery. Now, this option is also not expandable like the UPS option, um, but it's mobile. Uh, anybody can obviously move it around because most of them have wheels. They do weigh a ton, by the way, so I wouldn't recommend picking any of those ones up. You, and they normally come with plugs, so you can plug in your appliances and so on. So in summary, the load shedding unit has its place. It's, it's a bit bigger than your typical UPS system. It can run a little bit more. Things like your TV, your lights, uh, you're obviously running your, um, your computer, and you're charging your phone and your modem and such, but you can't run things like your kettle, heavy appliances like a fridge and so on. So it's suited for uh, people who want to run a little bits and pieces and a little bit more compared to the UPS, but it's not so good if you want to have a proper solution later on. And that goes on to the other point I want to make is that it's not extendable. Everything's in a, in a box and you can't get in there to add another battery or extend the inverter size. Do not get the lead acid option. It might be a budget friendly option for some and that's fine, but remember you've got about a year or two before that item will get damaged because remember you have to keep that thing charged constantly. If you don't charge it and you run it dry, it is done. So this brings us to our final and in my opinion, the best solution. That is the built-in load shedding kit. This system comprises of an inverter and a battery. It is expandable and extendable. It wires straight into your house, into your DB board. Now, the great option is that your DB board, 
you can prioritize to run your lights, your plugs, and leave the rest out. And most importantly, you can add solar later. This by far is the best option. So in your DB board, you'll have a row of plugs and you'll have a row of lights. And in here, you can wire your lights as a priority and obviously your plugs. And then later on, when you want to expand your battery bank, then you can include other items in your household. This, in my opinion, is the best scalable option for load shedding in any event. So here's a few strategies I'd like to suggest. Now, for those living in apartments, what I'd recommend is getting yourself a nice off-grid inverter, preferably a UPS one with a small battery bank. My, the smallest one I would recommend is a 3.5 kilowatt hour. This will run pretty much everything in your household except things like your um, stove, electric stove, your kettle, and your microwave. But it sets you up nicely, so if you add another one, that it can run those items and then you're fully covered. For those living in a house and have the ability to install a larger system and have the intent to go solar later, my recommendation is to make sure that your inverter size is large enough for future proofing. Make sure it's a quality hybrid inverter, preferably. If you choose an off-grid inverter, then I would decide on getting a high voltage inverter, preferably with a UPS function. Now, the reason that we want to upsize our inverter as well is that it's going to prepare you for the extra load that you're going to put on it. The easy way to do this and to size your inverter is to work out all of your appliances which, and their ratings, which come in watts, Add those all together and that should give you the max size that you need for your household. Second thing is the batteries. Make sure that you're going to buy a battery that's been around for a while, it's got a good reputation and you know it's going to be around in the future. So when you want to expand your battery bank, you're going to be able to have that option. Also remember the battery and inverter combination. They, you would ideally want to have communication between both of those. I recommend watching the lithium ion battery video to understand the basics. And lastly, get yourself a quality good installer. Now, a lot of the problems that we've ever had have been with bad installations. Make sure that you get surge protection because remember, when ESCOM goes off, there's going to be a big surge when it comes back on. Um, make sure the installation is clean and tidy and make sure that you test the system uh, before signing it off. I hope this video has shed some light on helping you choose the right load shedding solution for you. If you have any questions or if you want to complain about ESCOM, please give us a comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, pause back on. To hit home because sorry I got an itchy nose. Okay, that's in the cave. <laughs> I think they call me. If I call them a unit, let me just Google it quickly. Uh, items. No, it's not items. It's just servers, obviously. Duh.